no, I'm not saying black holes don't exist. I am saying that when quantum mechanics effects are taken into account, then um, singularities, the singularity theorem is violated. I think there's a lot of indirect evidence for the, the existence of black holes. Um, I think very soon we're going to have direct evidence. We're going to point a bunch of telescopes at the center of the galaxy, and we're going to look at, for this event horizon, this dark circle. Black holes exist, but are weird. Okay. There's abundant astrophysical evidence for stellar mass and supermassive black holes. Uh, afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to Bango's Another Theory of the Universe. We do get through a lot of theories at this festival, I must say. <laughs> um, what we're discussing um, is black holes, really. Uh, early in his career, um, Hawking and Penrose, who was uh, here just last weekend, um, described black holes and claimed that they break all of the known physical laws. So in other words, in our universe are little pockets which don't run according to the, the laws of the rest of the universe, which is an extraordinary thought. Since then, they've been found at the centre of galaxies, but now some leading cosmologists, Hawking's amongst them, are beginning to say they doubt that black hole exists. Um, so are black holes more of a science fiction than a fact? And, and if so, what's really at stake? Um, does it do violence to the theory of relativity? Does it do violence to our theory of the beginning of the universe? Um, to help us discuss this, we have our three panellists. To my right, um, Laura Massini halton I see you again. Um, professor of Physics at the University of North Carolina. Um, widely covered new scientist in BBC because you are no stranger to controversy. Um, one of the people who has researched the ways that we can gather experimental evidence for other universes, for the multiverse. Um, and not content with ruffling those feathers, she's now telling us that there may be evidence to suggest that black holes don't exist. Um, to my left, uh, Michael Rowan Robinson, astronomer, astrophysicist at Imperial College London, um, former president of the Royal Astronomical Society. Uh, he was awarded the Hoyle Medal for his research in cosmology um, and has pioneered the technologies now aboard the Her Herschel Space Telescope well. and the Planck satellite, is that right? Involved, yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, and where, is it true you were also the PhD supervisor for Brian May? Brian yes, May. yes, oh, yes. Well, Very good are. student. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you worked really hard. I had to bring it up, sorry. <laughs> uh, and, and over there we have uh, Pedro Ferreira, Professor of Astrophysics, University of Oxford. Um, you wrote the book A Perfect Theory, The Perfect Theory, yeah. uh, um, to do with the battles which have already been waged around general relativity. And that book was shortlisted for the um, Winton Royal Society Science Book Prize and shortlisted for Physics World Book of the Year. Um, I'll ask each of our panellists to give us their views in four minutes. I'll try and hold them to that, and then we will uh, set to the debate. Um, if I could start with you, Lara. So um, black holes have, have quite an interesting history. If you think of uh, the uh, first Oppenheimer-Snyder work that uh, used general relativity to show the existence of black holes and how um, Oppenheimer had this 20-year-long debate with uh, John Wheeler, who ironically ended up coining the, the word black hole. And then you think of uh, Eddington and Chandra Sekhar, uh, Chandra Sekhar again did pioneering work and uh, using general relativity showed the existence of black holes and Eddington didn't like that a bit to the point that he called it a stellar buffonery. <laughs> and um, of course, um, after that, uh, I don't think there is anyone that doubts the existence of black holes, especially with, with uh, a very important work by uh, Sir Roger Penrose and uh, Stephen Hawking. Um, things got a bit tricky after the uh, discovery of Hawking radiation by Hawking in the early 70s. And the reason is because pretty soon people realize that if you use quantum mechanics and therefore obtain Hawking radiation, um, you end up with a huge paradox known as the information loss. And that's no good because it, um, in a nutshell, it forces us to rethink this age-long battle 
between general relativity and quantum theories. If we accept Hawking radiation, which we do, then we have to doubt the foundations onto which the existence of black holes is established because of the information loss. Uh, quantum mechanics has this sacred principle that uh, states no information can ever be lost. In that case, um, anything that goes down a black hole and disappears down a singularity um, produces this paradox where all the information, in, in principle, we could stuff the whole universe down a black hole, down the singularity of a black hole and lose that information forever. But yet, at the same time, we would use this quantum theory that has just been violated to deduce the existence of Hawking radiation. So it, and, and this debate has been going on for at least 30 years. Uh, many great scientists has, have tried to come up with different ways of solving it, but the paradox uh, persists. And um, it, it seems that we either have to trust quantum mechanics or trust general relativity or wave our hands in the air and say, perhaps we need that unknown theory of quantum gravity. Ah, right, we're back to that. To my experience, whenever we end up with such a blunt paradox, such as the information loss, usually something very basic and elementary has been missed out from the picture. Right. When you say information loss, you mean the information that's connected with the matter that disappears into yeah. that? Right, okay. And, and never comes back, because we don't know what happens and to the singularity. Is it your opinion now that the, the evidence is now against black holes existing? Ooh, that's a loaded one. So, uh, <laughs> uh, for, for whatever reason, people have grown very attached to the word uh, black holes. I think part of it has to do uh, with, with the culture that, that spread beyond uh, the physics community. So, no, I'm not saying black holes don't exist. I'm saying that when quantum mechanics effects are taken into account, then um, singularities, the singularity theorem is violated and singularities may not exist. What you have instead is some sort of huge massive object that would have the same mass and gravitational field as a black hole, but it would not have this exotic singularity at the center. In that case, you wouldn't have the information loss paradox. Look, I mean, if you look at the history that Laura's mentioned, there's an ebb and flow with regards to black holes. So actually, in, in, in 1915, Einstein puts out his theory. It, one of his colleagues solves his theory and comes up with a solution. And let's just be clear what we mean by black holes. We mean a bit of space-time where right at the center, it's spherically symmetric, so it's, you know, it's, it's round. Uh, right at the center, the, the geometry is just infinite. It's very, very sharply curved. Um, and then a little bit out, there's a kind of a shroud. There's a surface, which is what's known as the, the event horizon. And stuff that goes into this event horizon can't, can't come out. Schwarzschild comes up with this, and, and um, Einstein, he says, this is a solution, but it's very mathematical. And, and that's kind of been the tenor throughout the, you know, the last hundred years, is that someone looks again at black holes, comes up with a more physical model, and someone says, well, actually, it's, it's just mathematics. So stellar buffoonery that... You mentioned the, the Eddington. And I, I just think there is this ebb and flow where at some point someone disagrees. You know, someone thinks that there's something wrong with black holes. Okay? So that's just going to happen for a while. Um, all, it all boils down to of, you know, mathematical evidence for it is definitely there. It all boils down to observational evidence. And I, just, I don't, you know, don't want to rain on your parade. I'm going to let you talk about the observational evidence. But one of the things that I, I, I think there's a lot of indirect evidence for the, the existence of black holes. Um, I think very soon we're going to have direct evidence. We're going to point a bunch of telescopes at the center of the galaxy and we're going to look at for this event horizon, this dark circle. And we're basically the, the telescopes are going to be sufficiently resolved that we're going to be able to make a, 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 take a photograph of it. And we're going to see, we're going to see if this event horizon is there or not. So my answer to you is um, I think ultimately it's a, an experimental question, it's an observational question, and we're going to see if it's there or not. Now, there are various aspects to this. The fact what happens right at the center, um, you know, what happens to this shroud, and these are th we're debating these bits of it. So I want to say um, four things. S summary first. Black holes exist, but are weird. <laughs> okay. There's abundant astrophysical evidence for stellar mass and supermassive black holes. I'll, d I'll just say a little bit about those. In my view, the problem is it's Hawking radiation. D 
does not really exist. I'll explain what I mean by that. <laughs> 